Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After a very good uh, inaugural ceremony, uh, we are going to start with uh, Satya Gen X conference. And our first topic is uh, Orbon Travel Reinventing Strategy. We have a galaxy of speakers, mainly thought leaders from around the world discussing about what should be the strategy for the travel and tourism industry uh, for, to go forward. Uh, today, the moderator for this session is Mr. Mahendra Bhatia, Managing Director, Pathfinder Studies, and immediate past president of OTOAI. He will be leading the discussion today. Over to you, Mr. Bakhariya, sir. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Murari. Uh, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to my esteemed panelists, all the viewers who are listening on to this discussion. Uh, colleagues from the travel industry and the media. And thank you, Team Informa and Sata Gen X for conducting this event and, and, and a two-day event. The discussion of our panel is Outbound Travel Reinventing Strategy. As you all know, the outbound travel market from India is one of the fastest growing markets in the world and currently pegged around about 27 million travelers. The outbound market from India is forecasted to grow to a whopping 45 million travelers or tourists in the next couple of years. And this is a humongous number of travelers that we are speaking. Outbound travel market from India comprises of leisure travel, VFR, that's visiting family and relatives, friends, mice travel, business travel, Bleasure, which is a new coined uh, word that's emerging very fast, and the huge Indian wedding market. The current pandemic has brought to a halt this massive juggernaut of the outbound travel from India, as like in other countries as well. However, travel will surely happen. I'm very positive of that. And so is the, the esteemed minister uh, did mention in, in the inaugural ceremony as well. Travel is in the human nature and it's in the basic DNA of a human being. You cannot stop this aspiration and urge to travel, to explore, to experience and celebrate life. Travel is one of the best ways to celebrate life. And this pandemic has made everyone in the world uh, realize the importance of living in the present moment and enjoying life to its fullest. However, some of the, there are some of the immediate concerns that come to the mind uh, for a traveler are pertinent and, and which needs to be taken care of by the stakeholders involved in the outbound tourism industry. You know, for example, what are the, what are the, the pertinent questions? What is the preparedness of the destination for welcoming international visitors? What is the quarantine policy at present for visitors in the destination? What measures are adopted by the destination to instill confidence among travelers? What is the distinct uh, shift or innovation in the marketing strategy that is being adopted? How are you perceiving as a destination, how are you perceiving India as a, a source market post COVID times? And lastly, what is the kind of support extended to stakeholders of the tourism industry and hospitality industry in your country by your government? Today, we have a super eminent panel of highly respected, eminent CEOs and leaders of the respective national tourism boards of different countries who are going to tell us about their country, how their country is working to tackle this pandemic and what new strategies they have reinvented to revive tourism into their country. I would like to start with, in a random order, I would like to start with Mr. Arvid Bundan from the Mauritius Tourism Promotion Authority. He's the director with the Mauritius Tourism Promotion Authority a dear friend of Indian tourism and, 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 and he's visited India so many times. You always feel he's, he's more Indian than Mauritian, you know, and he's got Indian tourism in his heart. 
my question to you mr arvind and i'll start off with this panel discussion the way i would like to do we will have a quick question which will be a opening remark and then we will uh, depending on the time we'll see if we can take some question answers live from the audience the question to you mr arvind is the mauritius government has allowed visitors to come to mauritius from 1st of october which is a very positive sign however the quarantine procedures are very stringent and i sometimes not very practical for example it says that you have to have a compulsory quarantine at a hotel for 14 days on arrival now how practical and possible is this why will the tourists come in such a case or a situation and is this the right marketing strategy to revive tourism to the beautiful island nation of mauritius miss arvin please a uh, warm welcome to everybody uh, one thing i would like to highlight is the time being mauritius our borders are still closed and our borders remain closed till 31st of october for the past months actually what we've been doing is we've been repatriating all our fellow stranded mauritian citizens from abroad and as from 1st of october which was on saturday uh, as from 3rd of october which was on saturday we have some scheduled flights air mauritius is flying from france twice a week once from reunion on top of that we have one flight from emirates flying from dubai and during the month of october our total load factor would be around 5000 seats that's the airlift capacity but as you rightly say we have to start somewhere why were these flights chosen from europe because first of all river are cargo flights what we are actually doing with air mauritius we are just asking them to operate on a commercial basis so that we can get some tourists also and uh, as I, as you rightly said you know tourism is at the heart government decisions mauritius getting if we get the pandemic back in mauritius it will suffer a lot tourism we are very conscious is a vital component we are very conscious of that that's one of the reason the op the opening of our fa of our different phases is extremely controlled yes it is stringent 14 days in a quarantine center is difficult Phase one. So, what is um, figures are quite thousand uh, seats that we have during this month. We've already seen around two thousand seats already. Yeah, around sixty percent. We have also forty percent of foreigners. they could be holders of resi residence permit occupation permit or stay to rest spend their 14 days this in hotel designated quarantine centers and after that they will move out after their 14 days out of the of the hotel compound to mix with the population that we are undergoing during this month this on the basis of this month a uh, result i'm sure we would come with a second proposal and uh, the way we see things right now is that our second proposal would be you would enter resort it would be resort holiday so you would check in right now what is happening is that it's a, it's an in room quarantine and the, the second phase i presume we are working on it is that you check in in a resort 
you enjoy all the facilities, the beach, uh, any facilities in the resort. At the end of, but you don't mix with, you don't go outside, excursions and all. At the end of your, your stay, then you move out. This would be the second phase. We are working towards this phase. Or it could be another option which has also been uh, earmarked is that we could shorten the quarantine period. But unfortunately, uh, we were thinking about eight, nine days quarantine. Then after that, you know, we could, the, the passengers could mix with the population, could go outside. But unfortunately, last week, you know, we had two positive cases after their 14th day quarantine. That means on their 14th day, they were positive. And, uh, and these, these latest um, cases are definitely impeding on, on our strategy. But, ex but we are conscious that measures are stringent. Yes, of course, we do agree with that. But we have to take all the necessary precaution so that there is no second lockdown in this in, in Mauritius. But point is, on the basis of the first phase, which is stringent, I agree, this would gradually bring us to another phase where we could open up a little bit. But let me reassure you, nobody has the secret for that. Figures are extremely dynamic. dynamic and uh, we just pray that the phase one goes well so that we can open up a little bit. Thank you. Have I answered your question? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Arvind. And I'm uh, very happy to note that uh, uh, the government is very proactively looking at uh, reducing the quarantine days from 14 days to a shorter period, as well as putting them into a resort which they wanted to stay and then use it as a part of a quarantine also. A uh, lot of uh, check in measures all the then, then will have to be in place uh, because it will be a continuous process. Every day we'll have to keep evaluating the situation and then react to it. So I fully understand the challenges for a destination. I would like to move on to my second panelist and I would like to invite Mr. Tayyip Mohammed, uh, who is the Managing Director of Maldives Marketing and Public Relations Corporation. Mr. Taib is the Managing Director of Maldives Marketing and PR Corporation since 27 November 2018. He is a graduate from the Bournemouth University with Master of Arts in Broadcast and Film Management. He started his career in the media industry at Television Maldives. With his expertise in management and public relations, he held various prominent positions as Chairman of Maldives Marketing and PR Corporation, Finance Executive at the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, and as State Ministry of Tourism. With over 14 years of experience in the area of management, Mr. Tayyip brings with him an extensive experience in strategic planning, decision-making, and international networking, with emphasis on fostering creativity in the executive management level. Mr. Tayyip, welcome, and my question to you is, Maldives has opened already its borders to visitors, and we are very happy, and thank you for that. You know, uh, Indians are raring to get into Maldives for their holiday, which has been pending since the last six months. Kindly share what are the measures uh, that are adopted by the government to instill confidence in visitors? What are the facilities for quarantine if required? What are the costs for the same? Also very important, the government of India requires all <coughs> incoming passengers returning back to India to have a COVID negative test report taken 96 hours prior to their uh, journey. What is the facility in Maldives for such tests? Please, Mr. Tai. Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you, Mahindra. That's very kind. Uh, thanks for the kind words about me. <laughs> it's. Um, uh, I would like to start with uh, giving a brief about uh, Mo the Maldives, of course. Uh, as, you know, as you may have known, on 15th July this year, we reopened our borders, fully confident in the safety measures and prepara preparations to ensure the protection of all visitors coming to Maldives as well. 
please note that our top priority is the safety of our, of our guests and the staff at the resorts. Resort facilities and, uh, and tourist establishments also have been regulated to ensure that they are in with the COVID-19 tourism guidelines. Liverboats and safaris have also resumed operations now. And they are safe as, as they are self-contained and do not require contact with local population or visitors outside the group. Guest house is set to open on 15th of this month too. This ensure, these measures ensures that visitors can enjoy their vacation and various activities without any interruption. Well, entering to the Maldives. Before entering Maldives, a confirmed booking in a tourist establishment registered with the Ministry of Tourism is mandatory. A 30-day free visa on arrival is issued to tourists of all nationalities. However, during this situation, we need an online health declaration form and submitted within 24 hours prior to departure. All, traveling, all travelers arriving to Maldives require mandatory negative PCR test, which is done maximum 72 hours before departure and be filled 24 hours arrival. PCR tests for infants aged less than one year are exempted. Symptomatic patients have to undergo a PCR test and tourists with a history of contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19 within 14 days prior to arrival must be examined by the doctor at the designated health screening clinic or area and a sample should be taken for PCR testing, COVID-19 testing, which I mean. All travelers are required to wear face masks and sanitize as much as possible. Moreover, to make contact tracing easier, tourists are encouraged to uh, install trace Aki application. Contact tracing also should be done for the symptom patient. Before departure, tests can be done and it could be arranged through the property's representatives. Airport health accredit accreditation and safe travel stamps. The government is constantly working to ensure that tourist operations have stringent safety guidelines as our colleague from, uh, friend from Mauritius has just said. And the guidelines are in place to safeguard the health and well-being of the visitors. In fact, we have been receiving international recognition for the safety measures implemented. Velana International Airport is the second airport in the Asia Pacific region to receive the much awaited airport health accreditation by the Airport Council International on 31st August, 2020. Maldives has also received the safe travel stamps grant granted by the World Travel Tourism Council. Next, is the big thing, guest house opening. And it's a very, very popular market for the Indian tourists. It will be open on 15th October. One more thing, split stay. Split stays are permitted between resorts that meet, that meet all the requirements or compulsory requirements under the split stay guidelines. Requests for approval of split stays should be submitted to the Ministry of Tourism two days prior to the travel in date. The air travel bubble between Maldives and India was the first to be established in the South, East, uh, South Asia, which, is, which was initiated in August. With this arrangement, Air India will conduct single weekly flight from VIA to Trivandrum every Tuesday. Indigo has also scheduled flights from India to Maldives after the, this arrangement. We Indian market arrivals will, if we, ha if we have time, I want to uh, talk about that as well. Today, we have commenced a radio advertising campaign in India and a campaign with Vedi Sutra as well. We have also participated in the Sata Gen X virtual exhibition, which has started today. Our hope for the following months is that 
the Maldives tourism industry will be able to recover and continue to thrive in the aftermath of the pandemic. Guidelines and standard op operation procedures, we aim to deliver the best possible experiences for the tourists. From March this year, as the world was almost in total lockdown, most activities MMPRC, which is us, M Visit Maldives, carried out was merely based on online and digital campaigns. Many webinars were carried out and many visibility campaigns were carried out and still is being done. The Rediscover Maldives campaign, which was launched on 1st September, is to focus on the experiences found in this beautiful Maldives and many experiences like local cultures, living like a local and so on will be showcased, giving additional boost for the world. We are also extremely proud to have launched Maldives Border Miles on World Tourism Day. And it is the first of its kind loyalty program, not just in Maldives, but in the entire world. Tourists enrolled in this program will acquire points each time they visit Maldives. I will, I, can, uh, I will be giving additional information about this border miles. Sure. Later. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taib. And that's a very, very innovative uh, thing. The border miles uh, program that Maldives has rolled out, the first country in the world, uh, which, is, which is what is required in, in the new way forward. You know, we will have to be very innovative and we will have to be very collaborative. Thank you, Mr. Taib, for your uh, opening remarks. And... Maldives is a very popular destination from India and we are super excited it's opened up uh, or giving us an opportunity to start reviving tourism, outbound tourism from India as well. I would like to move on to my third panelist and I would like to invite Mr. Vachirachai Kun Vachirachai Sirisimpan, uh, who is the Director of Tourism Authority of Thailand, New Delhi. Tourism Authority of Thailand, short form TAT, very popular uh, in the Indian market. He is a new director of Tourism Authority of Thailand in New Delhi office from the 1st of February 2020. So he has come as recent as just less than six months and he's caught right in the eye of the storm. He has been with TAT for more than 20 years with extensive experience working in various departments, including International Relations Division, Europe, Middle East and Africa Market Region, Domestic Marketing and Policy and Planning Department. As a new director of TET New, Del new Delhi office, he holds responsibility to promote Thailand as a favorite destination. I don't think so he has to do any work because Thailand is such a popular destination world over, you know, not only for the Indian travelers in the area of North India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan. So that's his responsible area. My question to you, Ms. Kun uh, Vachirachai is, how prepared is Thailand as a country to welcome international visitors? What is the policy being adopted to make it comfortable and easy for visitors to arrive? There was some news in uh, some time back and you know it's not confirmed or you could give clarity that a visitor coming to the borders of Thailand will have to stay for a minimum of 30 days in Thailand. Is this true and practical? Again, a similar question that I asked Mr. Arvin. And how is Thailand Authority of Tourism communicating with the world to clear such doubts or misconceptions? What is the quarantine policy and message adopted? Please, Kun Vachirachai. Okay, um, thank you very much, Mr. Mahandras, um, for your high word. Yes, um, we here, um, beginning of this year, which is very challenging. I'm looking forward to welcome uh, all the Indians and, and others to visit Thailand as well as um, looking forward to visit more of Indian very soon. And I, I believe now we could easily um, gradually start crawling within, within the country in India. So first of all, I would like to extend my appreciation to Satej and X for inviting me to join this panel discussion with all distinguished panelists. And thank you for those who are interested in and attending these discussions. To answer your question, I go point by point, okay, for the preparations of welcoming international visitor to Thailand, actually we have been preparing, you know, um, since the lockdown because we need to continue to, to work on this. So there's uh, two important parts that uh, TAT have been working on. One is building up the confidence on safety and health measures of the destinations. So, 
with all the measures that we have done, I can say that Thailand is now ranked first among the country with highest COVID-19 recovery index. So the situation within the country is well controlled and managed. So life and business in the country are back to normal, nearly back to normal, but I can say like new normal because you have to have, to have all of those precautions. Um, domestic tourism is, is in full swings. Uh, people now are traveling within the countries. Apart from this, in terms of controlling, managing the COVID-19, second point, okay, on, on building up confidence is that the Tourism Authority of Thailand, together with the Ministry of Public Health, with cooperation of public and private sectors, have launched what we call Amazing Thailand Safety and Health Administration Certification, or HSA. So this is like a uh, standard operations procedures of Thailand. So this is to ensure the highest standards and hygiene, covering all services and attractions in travel and tourism businesses in Thailand. And this HSA, we have been launched since May this year. So now, now most of the things are already in place. S second factors apart from building up confidence, which is part of actions. So we need to communicate to everyone. So maintain communication to both tourists and pro partners, very important. For TAT, we're working at two levels. Okay, once is at the global communication which is done by our headquarters in Bangkok. Second level, we are working communication with in market. Uh, we have, uh, TAT have 29 OC offices. And here in India, we have two offices in Delhi and Mumbai. So our objective on communication is to keep Thailand as a top of my destinations and connecting, maintain our good relationship with all our travel trade partners. So this is one of the part of our population that we continue of working on this, okay? So for Thailand tourism, we are start with our domestic tourism first, which I believe would be similar to many countries. Uh, same as here, I think in India as well. So why the openings th Thailand for international travel will be done gradually with high precautions of safety for both Thais, international residents living in Thailand, as well as anyone who will be entering into Thailand. So the gradually phase, uh, I can give some information from here. So since 1st of July, okay, Thailand start to allow entry of several group of foreigners but I can say that this first group would be those who is essential traveling to Thailand, including like those who have to work in Thailand, who have friends, I'm oh, sorry, who have families in Thailand, students or who need a medical requirement in Thailand. So this is the first group uh, who are uh, allowing to enter in Thailand, okay? The latest development is that the Thai government have officially announced a special visa for long-term visitors start from 30 September, okay. Um, as you have asked, so those who entering Thailand are required to comply with Thailand COVID control measures and undergo quarantine in alternative local state or hospital quarantine for minimum of 14 days, okay. Um, so this is, this is uh, our requirement, both Thais or international visitors. Um, it's long, okay, it's, 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 but now if you see um, to the YouTube, now there are a lot of review about you know quarantine in Thailand and and I believe this would give a better idea of what it will be like or how you will prepare prepare yourself during the quarantines okay and then other point okay um, as as you say since this is the long term um, requirement of staying that means apart from quarantines then you need to have a group of staying longer in Thailand a minimum would be about thirty days but again. Um, this is the concept, the, the, the more guideline will be coming out very soon, okay? So last but not least, from my point of view, okay, the, like, the current measures can be seen as the first phase, okay, of opening up Thailand gradually for international tourists. And with all the current measures and no commercial flight and limited numbers of international entering Thailand per day, I understand that um, this might not be encouraging for normal leisure traveling, but I would like to, to point out that this is kind of a starting point, you know, that we gradually open up uh, Thailand for the tourists soon. So we're looking forward to things we're getting better, not only Thailand, but around the world as well. So this is uh, my, my point to answer your question. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Khun, um, uh, Sinsupe. Uh, of course, yes, every destination has got this challenge. You know, you do not know. And, and like all of us, nobody knows uh, what is the right formula to counter this? What is the right measure to do this? We will have to keep inventing this on a daily basis to make sure that uh, as we want to increase and promote tourism and invite more visitors coming to the destination, the safety measures are equally going to be important, not only for the visitors who are coming in, but also for the locals of each destination. And I fully respect that with your candid uh, uh, admission, uh, uh, Kun. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to move on to my next panel is a dear friend, Mr. Sanjay Sondi, who's uh, the country manager of Visit India Tourist uh, Office India. Uh, he, Mr. Sanjay Sondi, is the joint managing director of OM Tourism based out of New Delhi and also the joint managing director of Outbound Marketing a Representation Organization. He is a graduate and bachelor of Unani Medicine and Surgery and also with a diploma in taxation and financial management. I never knew this side of your uh, uh, story, Mr. Sajay. He is involved in the hospitality and representation business since the last 18 years, and his company is representing some very prominent destination and brands in tourism in India. Since 2008, he is heading the Visit Indonesia Tourism Office in India as the representative. My question to you is, uh, Indonesia is a big country, but within that, Bali is super, super popular with the Indian tourism market. You know, uh, there are not only the first time, but repeat uh, visitors who keep going, uh, like to Thailand, even to Bali, which is so very high on the list of destinations for travel. Sadly, Bali, however popular it is, is still not open for international visitors. When is it likely? to be opening up number one and what are the measures again taken by the government, especially the island of Bali uh, to, to install confidence among travelers who are coming there? And is there a distinct shift in the marketing strategy to promote the destination post COVID? And if so, what is it? Please, Mr. Sanjay. Thank you, Mr. Vakaria. Thank you for your kind words. and. Uh, what very good afternoon to all the panelists, the distinguished panelists. Uh, yes, uh, as you mentioned, Bali is a very popular destination for Indians traveling to Indonesia. And uh, we have seen a growth of almost 25 to 30 percent year on year uh, of Indians coming into Bali for experiences like honeymoon, wedding, leisure. It's a family destination. Everybody would like to enjoy uh, the beaches and the nightlife and other parts of uh, what the destination offers. Yes, unfortunately, uh, we have not taken a decision to open the borders as yet. Uh, uh, again, uh, it's, it's a mix uh, of health for all. So we are working, uh, the government has started a certification process, which is called the Clean Health Safety and Environment, where we are looking after all the, all the uh, parameters uh, so that when the traveler comes, we are ready, we are, uh, we ensure the safety, the security as a destination right from arrival at the airport to the destination, to the common places of visit of interest. We, we are trying to implement those uh, social distancing, hygiene, safety, not only at the airport, but the hotels right from the check-in, which is a, going to be a seamless check-in. We are also working on a seamless visa on arrival process, which is uh, totally going to be online with very little interface with humans across. So, so these are the things we are working on and the certification from the hotels. We are doing certification for the restaurants, for the uh, attractions. Uh, we want to ensure that the implementation, the monitoring of social distancing is monitored very in a very proper way so that uh, um, Mr. Vakaria, uh, holidays are all about experiences. It's about an, a happy experience. So we want to continue providing that to our traveler when they arrive into Indonesia, not just Bali. This period has given us time to also think about what more Indonesia can offer. So we are working on more destinations. Uh, to tell you, Bintan, which is uh, bordering uh, uh, Singapore, is already ready to uh, accept tourists. We have all the parameters and things in place, uh, whether it is uh, arrival into a ferry terminal, right to the uh, departure procedures. Uh, when we talk about uh, opening up of international borders, we are also working on uh, 
things like uh, quarantine facilities. Uh, we have quarantine facilities available in Indonesia across bigger cities. Bali has also got some hotels. There we have some hot hospitals which are, are ready for such emergencies. And at the moment, the quarantine period is only for people who are coming back to Indonesia. Uh, the expats of, who have long-term business visas is again 14 days of quarantine. We have not opened, as I mentioned earlier, for tourists as yet. So we are also waiting how ready the other destinations are. Unfortunately, from India, uh, we do not have a direct flight. So we also depend on the connecting destination, how effective the measures are there, what is the experience, how easy would be a transit from the connecting place into Indonesia. And uh, if we uh, talk about what measures are we taking to keep our visibility very high, we, we have our uh, online uh, uh, promotions going on. Our website is very active. We have all the information available on the visit uh, on www.indonesia.travel and we also are partnering with major players in India uh, to come onto their uh, website portals to, uh, to do a promotion campaign, how safe is Indonesia. And also uh, we are having a meeting with our Ministry of Health, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ex External Affairs on 13th of October. And that is when we will decide what should be the opening date, how ready the destinations are. So that meeting is being held in Bali. And after that, we are going to start um, campaigns on preparation of opening up. We have, uh, we have uh, about 400 influencers, key opinion leaders of different nationalities staying in Indonesia. So we have uh, invited them to be part of a meeting where we prepare videos, we prepare some communication, the messages from them for the respective countries so that our messages across to our uh, 13 hours our travelers uh, and also to showcase how ready the destination is, what are the ground realities, how, how we are doing on, on ground what is happening and we did open for uh, domestic tourism about uh, one and a half months back so that instill the confidence the hotels could uh, again come to a certain level the expectations what the government had put in place in terms of certification and other things so i hope i've answered your question mr makaria thank you yes and i'm eagerly all of us are eagerly looking forward to your outcome on the meeting of 13th october and uh, if if everything falls in place one more destination could be opened up for uh, indian uh, tourists to travel out of india now I'm very excited to invite um, Mr. Fad Hamidadin, is, who is a complete uh, debutant uh, as far as I'm concerned to our outbound market in India. Uh, and uh, he is a chief executive officer and a member of the board of the Saudi Tourism Authority. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Fad, because I think we are getting an opportunity to listening to him for the first time ever in the tourism industry in India. He is responsible for delivering on the authorities mandate to build domestic and inbound visitation by developing packaging and distributing tourism offerings in collaboration with the industry. He also oversees the development of the Visit Saudi destination brand and the monitoring of visitor experiences. Before taking on this current role, he served as a chief investment strategy and tourism marketing uh, for the Saudi Ministry of Tourism. In that capacity, he played a leading role in launching the e visa and introducing the Visit Saudi brand with a global campaign that established Saudi Arabia as the world's most exciting new tourism destination. And I fully agree, even we in India are very excited with this brand new tourism destination. Mr. Fad was Chief uh, Marketing and Competitiveness at the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority Sagia, as it's called, where he has won five international awards for communications and advertising campaigns and online marketing strategy. In addition to sitting on the board of the Saudi Tourism Authority, he is also a member of the board of trustees for Prince Mohammed bin Salim, Salman, sorry, excuse me, College for Business and Entrepreneurship, the board of the General Authority for Convention and Exhibitions, and several government com committees. A very, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Fahd, and we are very excited to have you on the panel. My question to you would be, 
what have you learned from the domestic campaign that will prepare saudi arabia to receive international visitors in the post covid world and what will be your strategy going forward which countries are going to be your focus market for the next 3 to 5 years and how important is india for you as a market which segments of tourism from india are you looking at uh, uh, to for targeting and promotion thank you very much mr fat um first please call me fat uh, second uh, thank you mandra for the very kind introduction um i am uh, honored uh, to be joining you today and i thank sate uh, for for inviting me um along your esteemed panelists um so just like saudi is new in the game uh, i myself uh, am new to this uh, industry so i'm humbled to be a part of uh, um leaders and veterans of this uh, of this industry in this panel um so um i think our strategy if i may sum it up uh, it is probably in three main areas one is make sure that our offering is uh, both differentiated yet uh, appealing to our target source markets uh, and relevant to what saudi has to offer saudi is the land of arabia today saudi is the the, the land that the arabian language was uh, uh born and uh, developed it saudi arabia captures the largest uh, land space of the arab world and the arabian peninsula so what we um, uh, are trying to offer to world travelers that are uh, interested in culture adventure sun and sea is an arabia a take from arabia there is a lot of mystique and appeal and we've tested this concept and we now are trying to uh, present what arabia um, really has to offer to world curious travelers um the second is is making sure that everything is designed around an experience uh, rather than fragmented uh, offerings of different uh, sector players and value chain um yet as much as we want to do integration and leverage what technology and digital has to offer to create that service that experience and being seamless and so on the real success is um lies on keeping it authentic that curiosity that passion that is driving travelers can only be fulfilled with uh, less of the consumerized offering that people can find anywhere else so how can we be remain true to the authenticity of the experiences is the second strategy and i think um it's not rocket science it's just uh, reminding yourself of what is true to the land to the history to the people and um how could you create true connections between travelers and those the uh, uh, the third is having a long term uh, strategy into uh, defining the next generation of um, of tourism offering uh, where it matters and where does it matter in, in 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 simple terms i think sustainability comes first uh, so how could we have uh, a new take at um, um, at the future Uh, while keeping our focus on sustainable tourism that's our third pillar um you asked me if um, if we um, if we look at india as uh, as a um, uh, a prime source market the short answer is yes um so today in uh, saudi arabia is home to 5 million indians um if we only uh, make it easy for indians to visit friends and family that in itself is a great opportunity but what we're working now um on um, um and hopefully we we hear we announce good news soon is that we would like to facilitate an e visa scheme for all indians um what we know about indians is um, um is something that tells us we have a lot of resemblances uh with the indian travelers um now 
I think that what um, uh, what people may assume they know about Saudi um, is a little uh, different, and we are to blame. I have to say we have not explained the the narrative as it really is, and we have a lot of work to do to present Saudi in its diverse cultures, diverse natural assets, uh, just like um, uh, India. Saudi is is uh, is um, um, is a very big country, and geographically and topography, from a topography wise, uh, is extremely diverse. Very few people would assume that Saudi Arabia, in the midst of the desert, um, um, could go down to um, uh, below zero. Uh, and and we have um, spots in Saudi that offer that have snow. So uh, very few people would assume we have uh, green valleys as lush as, I wouldn't dare to say as, um, as uh, Indonesia because uh, we have our colleague here that may challenge, but um, we do have a lot of uh, green mountains and valleys. Um, I can definitely say um, we are another side of the world that is sunny as, as Maldives uh, position themselves. Um, so we have a lot to offer. But the true differentiator in my mind is the cultural experiences. And uh, we have a lot to do in terms of orienting consumers, tour operators, and OTAs in India. Um, to final point you asked about the key source markets, well, based on those three uh, travel purposes, um, culture, adventure, sun and sea, we've identified 30 countries, 30 source markets that make 90% of our target global travelers. We cluster them in 13 uh, markets and um, we're starting, um, um, uh, we've actually started communicating when we announced the, the e-visa scheme and we received 500,000 uh, travelers with just the announcement of our opening our doors. However, now we're gonna be more uh, specific and we'll make sure that we activate uh, the trade and, and, um, and induct the tour operators in every source market and um, obviously approach every market differently. Um, so um, we're not going to speak the language from here. We're going to curate uh, a conversation and a narrative that suits your audience with the right media partners and activating um, uh, local talents in India that could create that uh, bridge. And I mean agencies or even Bollywood. So um, uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Fahad. And, and, and so very happy. Uh, you know, the visitors from India is always looking at a new experience or a new destination. And we are very happy that Saudi tourism and Saudi Arabia is coming onto the, the radar and the map of world tourism as a, a tourism destination as well as a brand new. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm also equally very happy you touched upon the fact of cultural aspects. And I believe now going forward, people will be very keen to travel to experience the authenticity of the destination and just not come there and, and uh, uh, indulge themselves and come back. So experience of culture is equally very important. And you also mentioned about sustainability which is equally very important for all of us and more so now with post covid you know people will be more mindful and be aware of responsible and sustainable uh, tourism as well thank you very much and a warm thank welcome you. and we are eagerly wow. looking forward to to having more of saudi tourism participating in indian shows and you know giving us the opportunity to promote the destination uh, i would like to sorry, now move on sorry to, to interrupt you mr bakanya just for a few seconds mr arvin bundun has a very important meeting. So okay. we'll be leaving the panel. Okay. This is just for information. Okay. okay, all right. So quickly now I'll move on to our next panelist. And again, a, a, a neighboring country uh, to India, uh, Mr. Javed Ahmed he is the CEO of Bangladesh Tourism Board. Uh, warm welcome, Mr. Javed, to you as well. Mr. Javed, uh, Bangladesh, as I said, is the neighboring country to India, is as good as an extension in terms of culture, language, food habits, uh, etc. But the tourism board has not promoted itself as a tourism destination in India. Post-COVID, is the government looking at India as a very big source market for tourism? 
if yes kindly advise what are the plans to attract indian visitors and why should a visitor come to bangladesh for leisure mr javed please okay thank you very much uh, am i audible to you sir yes yes okay and uh, respected moderator mr mahendra and my fellow participants and my lovely audience uh, i must thank sate for arranging such a uh, important gathering of the very important personalities and uh, really i have learned many things from my fellow participants and this is my turn to say something and uh, i I, I i like to request mr mahendra just to allow me to tell some 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 brief about my tourism industry actually the you know the covid 19 situations in bangladesh it is the curve is decreasing it's a declining in trend is a now uh, nearly 10 11% uh, uh, the the detection rate is come, coming down and hopefully uh, within months or two months it will be uh, it will be it will be easy for us to tackle all the things here and the covid 19 outbreak has really stumbled the world economy that you know and tourism is the most affected sector it is it is widely known tourism is the most rising business sector but the graph becomes at the lowest point now for this pandemic Bangladesh is a lovely land of South Asia with the enormous potentiality of tourism. In the new normal situation, we are trying to initiate new contingency plan and innovative strategies so that we can restart ourselves. We have prepared the standard operating procedures for tourist transports. tourism attractions to operators and shopping malls and connected all the all the sectors with tourism to ensure the safety issues just to build up the confidence of the tourist world tourism organization announces to give emphasis on the short haul tourism time and again tourist will move their neighboring countries in the coming year i think short haul tourism and regional connectivity can be the best source of to revive the outbound tourism in this connection extended tour packages can be taken with the regionally connected countries to revive outbound as well as inbound tourism there is a historically strong bondage between bangladesh and india now bangladesh has be came the largest tourist generating country for india regarding medical and shopping purposes you know uh, every year 35 uh, lakh in uh, in fact 3 million people has gone in different destinations among the destination india is in, on the top at short haul is prioritizing bangladesh will be the best destination for the indian tourist also the tourists from india can come to see the magical bangladesh blessed with fascinated landscape friendly people rich history and culture mouth watering bengali cuisine sandy sea beach sundarbans and so on there is direct flight connectivity between bangladesh and india in the normal situation there are 10 regular flights from bangladesh to india in different destinations the historic dhaka is now drawn adorned with world class chain hotels at the same time our largest sandy beach coxes bazar t valley select is also ready with world class hotel chain and other exclusive facilities in this connection bangladesh is ready to hold mice with this uh, world class chain in dhaka coxes bazar and select we are on the process of easing the visa process and trying to issue the e visa in the coming days bangladesh tourism board is always careful to ensure the betterment of our operators for the both countries and uh, let me point uh, let me pinpoint the questions uh, you have raised before me why indian choose bangladesh as leisure destination and other one is the post covid activities to attract indian tourist 
Actually, Bangladesh Tourism Board is on the process of connectivity program between tour operators of India and Bangladesh through High Commission of Bangladesh that will increase the tourist inflow. We are trying to initiate a special offer from the carriers operators in both India and Bangladesh to catch more tourists. Visa facilitation is one of the priority tasks from our end and we will help the tour operators to get the tourist visa easily from our high commission if the tour operators share, their, share the list with us. Digitally enabled uh, activities like promotion on social media are going on the basis of targeting Indian tourists that uh, 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 I must I, I must explain that the most of the tourists uh, from India, they come from the neighboring states that, the, that is uh, uh, West Bengal and the other seven sisters. The, they, the language is very common. They know Bengali, so the promotional activities that attracts them also as well as the, as well as the Bangladeshis are attracted. And above all, the, uh, we have completed our preparation to arrange a familiarization uh, tour after the COVID situations with the tour operators from India that will take place shortly inshallah after COVID situation and why Indian choose Bangladesh as a leisure destination the, the point you have raised Indian is the closest neighboring country of Bangladesh and there is a historically bondage between these two countries now we have a world-class hotel chain in different locations Cox's Bazaar, the uh, longest sandy sea beach and the adventurous hill tracks will welcome you with its beauty and eco-friendly resorts. The mouth-watering Bengali cuisine like Shursha Elish, perhaps Mahindra you know, Shursha Elish, kebab and so on will give you the ultimate deliciousy. Their cultural homogeneity that will give you homely feelings. Our rich culture, lifestyle, and food habit of ethnic group will glorify our experiences. Mongol Shobhajatra, that is the Bangla term. Perhaps you may understand what I want to say. Mongol Shobhajatra, Holly Bath, and Rash Mela in Sundarban will give you the ultimate Bengali feelings. A huge collection of traditional wares like Dhakai Jamdani, Tangail, and crafting will give you the opportunity to own it. Sundarban, the forest and backwater are bestowed with special types of flora and fauna like uh, Royal Bengal tigers, migratory birds and so on that will give you fabulous experience of wildlife tourism. We are not so far away like your neighbor to welcome you as your family member. Thank you very much. Perhaps I have uh, answered you the, the uh, questions you have raised before me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Javed. Yes, definitely you have answered. And, you know, um, interestingly, uh, there's such a huge business traffic that's going from India to Bangladesh and vice versa. But somehow the, the, the tourism has missed an opportunity of converting that or extending that into also a leisure part of uh, tourism, which is called as a leisure, which is a new terminology which everybody is using where they're going for business work, but trying to combine a little bit of tourism as well. So I'm sure with what you have explained and the opportunities of, uh, of uh, culture, of nature, Sundarbans is very, very popular. Even in India, people have started going to Sundarbans uh, to experience the mangroves and, you know, uh, the, the wildlife there. So, I'm, and, and then cuisine, that is very, very, very important. Food for a traveler from India uh, is, uh, holiday is not complete with, without uh, good sumptuous uh, food, you know. So, so there are some uh, very good takeaways in the destination, but it's just that it needs to package properly to put it in a bouquet and present it to the Indian tourism market. Because as I said to Mr. Fahad as well, uh, Indian traveler is looking at new experiences, new destinations, and, and uh, wanting to, to uh, explore new areas. Uh, Mr. Murari, I just want to check, uh, do we have any live uh, questions that we need to answer uh, from any panelists at this moment? Mr. Murari, I am just I am just sharing with you in two minutes. Okay, all right. So, so in the meantime, I'll just uh, uh, depending on the question, then I'll I'll direct it to the the concerned panelists as well. But um, all in all, this uh, this was a very important session for us to to do this because, um, as I said, 
tourism is very important. The Indian tourist has been stuck at home since the last six months, is raring to go. Uh, uh, very happily to share that, you know, local tourism has already started and that will be the trend to, to, to start with. It will be local tourism, people using their own vehicles to go to a drivable destination and, you know, get that confidence and, uh, and the comfort that, you know, yes, things are getting normal and you could start moving out of your home, which you have been cocooned for the, the last five months, you know. So that is one uh, comfort factor. Uh, start with it will be uh, uh, tour, uh, regional tourism and then international also, which is side by side starting. Yes, I, I, I have a question for, that is there and that question is for Kun uh, Bacharachai. Uh, Thai Tourism Board, how does Thai Tourism Board protect an Indian mice company of the deposit paid prior to COVID-19 for a mice crew, you know? If the Thai company like CBS Travel, etc., files for insolvency in June 2020, Kun, seriously, please. Kun Vacharachai, can you yes, okay. hear my yes. question? Yes, I'm here. You can hear okay. me now, as well, right? Okay. Yep. Um, that that is um quite sensitive questions, and and I think it's the more of the business perspective on this. Um, I understand that there have been some inquiry to us as well um, regarding about the, um, the deposit monies on, on, on this part during the effect of the um, cancellation and everything. Um, what we have been done so far, we have, we, we, because we need to send it to, to um, our head office in Bangkok and then you know, the, the, the process is, is going on, on on the inquiry. In, in, in this sense. So, so I mean, from, from, from us, we, we took the, the inquiries or those complaints, okay? But again, um, as here, as, as I'm like the middle person between Thailand and India, so we, we act as our, uh, our middle persons. So we have already sent some of the inquiries back to Thailand on this. Um, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's, I think it's a big um, matters that we have to look into. Um, not only specific company here, also a lot of companies, hotels in Thailand are facing, facing the same um, problems on, on this. So I, I, I found that maybe in the future, the trends about the um, guarantees measure would be something changed that we will need to be adapt. So, so this is what we're doing is, is, is we are working on this, but you know, I, I believe it would take um, some time to, to resolve the issue and, and get some clear message on, on these matters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kun uh, Vachar Chai. Um, I hope that's answered the question to the gentleman or the person who's inquired and asked this question. <coughs> but very, very critical and important for all of us in the industry as stakeholders, whether we are in the servicing <coughs> side as, uh, as creators of the tour programs or you as a facilitators sitting in the tourism boards, um, more so now than ever, it will be very important to create very strong, reliable partnerships <coughs> with organizations because the pandemic has impacted a lot of um, a lot of us in different ways, you know. And it will be very critical to make sure that the tourism board uh, plays a very active role in ensuring that you know the stakeholders who are offering tourism of the destination are are monitored in 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 a, in a manner and communicated to the to the other end so that their uh, uh, negative incidents or uh, such happenings do not occur, which will then dampen the confidence of a traveler uh, going forward. There is another question that uh, Mr. Sanjay, uh, it's uh, I think directed to you, but it says that Bintan is open uh, for tourism, but because Singapore is closed as yet for Indian traveler, uh, how does it happen? And I, I think Going forward, this will be a challenge for a lot of destinations where there is no direct flight, which you already mentioned in your opening remark as well. Mr. Sanjay, please. Sir, please unmute. Please unmute, unmute. Can't hear you, Mr. Sanjay. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, as a destination, uh, the island is ready, but unfortunately, uh, the government also has not opened up the international borders for tourism uh, as yet. 
and also uh, with Singapore, we have to wait uh, what the neighboring countries are planning to do, how the transit would take place. So we are dependent on our uh, neighboring partners and also the government policy. So we, we wait and see how, how soon we can do that. And I hope the meeting next week would throw more light on what is the uh, travel bubble, the corridors which are being created between different countries. And if it happens with uh, the neighboring countries, then uh, ease the travel to Indonesia for Indians. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay. And I, I'm sure that is how it is going to be. We'll have to keep uh, checking on the updates and, and then uh, uh, make the plans accordingly. We are just at the fag end of our panel and I would like to invite uh, Mr. Thoib to come and uh, share his uh, 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 views of uh, urban tourism and the strategy with his closing remark. Mr. Thoib, please. Mr. Thoib? Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. This technology, okay. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I, I was saying it's uh, India is the last, second biggest source market for, for tourist arrivals to Maldives. And uh, last year alone, there was 166,000 arrivals from India. Wow. And see, since 15th July, we have recorded 18,000 in arrivals from India. Uh, uh, from India, it was 375, sorry. That was after we opened the borders this year. So this year, after the pandemic, before the pandemic, we have participated in major fairs such as SATE and BLTM in India. And that made us really popular as well. And then this year, we started with the very ambitious plans, but it all stopped. So many things has, done, uh, uh, has stopped what we really wanted to do and the world has changed. How we work, how we socialize, and it's no different with how we travel. So the markets were on pause, but we all knew, the Mo Visit Maldives knew it would rebound. I'm sure all the panelists here would really want that back. So we from our side we didn't pause and uh, while our competing destinations i'm sorry to say but still are on travel restrictions we open our borders on july 15th and to date we have received around about 18867 tourists up to the end of the last month this may be a very small number compared to the previous years but slowly Day by day, we are seeing promising results and I'm confident that inshallah, we will see better days soon. And I hope our uh, other partners here should see this, the whole, uh, this uh, opening of borders and seeing the uh, really good influx of tourists is one of the days we really would be like, we really would like to see. Great. As this, yeah, as this is a very fluid situation, our bold move in opening the borders have faced some very difficult cha challenges too, and we are trying to move on with the new normal in travel, one day at a time, learning each day, moving forward with stringent, stringent measures, and hoping we will be returning to normalcy soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toyeb. And yes, um, there's a there's a very old English saying that, you know, early bird gets the best worm. And, you know, you've taken the lead in making sure your doors are open for visitors to come and, and start experiencing the beautiful destination. And uh, rightly said, uh, the pandemic has made us all realize uh, what wrong we have been doing or what right we have not been doing all these years. And it's a time now for us to recorrect and uh, move forward. I would like to invite Mr. Fahd from uh, Saudi Tourism Authority to come in with his um, uh, observations and his closing remark for the for the audience, please. Well, uh, thank you again. Um, uh, to be honest, I feel that uh, the um, 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 uh, we have had a good experience um, activating domestic tourism, and um, we learned a lot from it. Um, Maybe this is not as relevant to other uh, well-established uh, tourism destinations, but um, um, in Saudi, um, while uh, domestic tourism represents 
um, 71% globally, it only represents around 30% uh, in terms of um, uh, travel and visits. So we had to activate domestic tourism. And what that did is um, it really uh, gave us, um, showed us opportunities that we had not, not expected in terms of uh, spending. Um, we exceeded um, year, a year, I mean, um, we indexed 30% uh, higher spend versus the year, the year before. And uh, that was with zero international investors, uh, sorry, travelers and primarily Umrah travelers, uh, business travelers that were uh, available the year before. So how did that happen? Uh, I think it happened uh, by number one, collaborating with government. And collaborating with government uh, is asking the government to, uh, to shoulder the cost of um, um, saving lives, making it easy for uh, tourists and trusted uh, destination or destinations for tourists and um, uh, helping the business, which brings me to how we um, partnered with the businesses. Many doubted the intention, the, the actual uh, travel of, uh, of uh, tourists uh, with the COVID fear. But when the government invested in um, uh, so many drive-through testing facilities, made um, uh, healthcare free for all um, uh, domestic, I mean, nationals and not, um, and funded uh, partial salaries of um, employees in the sector. That was a big uh, and bold uh, move for, by the government. And we weren't sure whether this is gonna pay out or not. But what happened is, I, as I said, it increased versus the year before. We had uh, in less than three months, $2.5 billion of, uh, of spend in domestic tourism, and it paid out. Jobs were recreated, government got their, uh, their returns in, in terms of economic GDP impact. And I feel that while COVID in the near future will continue, I think we need uh, to really get the government on our sides and um, use cases from around the world and show them the payout of whatever they may invest. Thank you, Mr. Safar. And yes, uh, somebody has to take the first step and you know, there's no set formula as I mentioned, but it's very important that the government is taking the initiative to set the ball in motion and you know, improve the sentiments and create positivity. A uh, quick uh, closing remark from Mr. Sanjay and then Mr. Uh, Jayab, because we have completely run short of time. Uh, please, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vakaria. Yes, uh, as everybody has been uh, mentioning, uh, we need to be patient. We, we need to uh, learn the new normal. We need to adapt to the uh, client expectations. So, so that's what we would be working on, what the new normal would be, what the new travel restrictions or the behavior of the travel, how is going to change. And we adapt to that. So we need to be very flexible in today's uh, time and we cannot plan for a very long term at the moment we we need to take each step as it comes so that that's what we are going to work on keeping those happy moments alive for our traveler thank you two key words that i take away from flexibility and living in the present moment let's not plan too much ahead in advance let's take it one day at a time and then react to it and final word from mr javed please uh, your closing remarks can't hear you can't hear you. Sir, uh, now, uh, now, now audible? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we have to revive the industry as soon as possible because the employment generation is the very important element now. The many, most of the people have lost, many people have lost their jobs. Even then, the people working abroad the people uh, have employed in Saudi Arabia and other, other, other Gulf states are coming back due to the lockdown and, this, and, the, and the pandemic situations. And we have to create more jobs inside the country. And that is the place, that is the area where we can create many jobs for, the, for our nationals. So this is, this is really, this is a very important uh, 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 area to develop. And uh, I think the, uh, the collaboration between the neighboring countries, that is, that is very uh, important for, for the time now. Very so well said. Come forward. Very well yeah. said, Mr. Javed. And I fully endorse that, you know, uh, none of us know 
uh, what would happen five months back we were we were coasting to to a very good summer holiday season and all of a sudden things change uh, for a, a worse start but things are looking up things are getting positive all we can do is follow the uh, the principle of sm as that sanitization mask wearing and making sure that social distancing is maintained and i'm sure life will come back to normal for all of us extremely grateful to all the panelists a, a wonderful session thank you very much for your time and and your uh, and your insights on the industry and how you all are uh, looking at uh, you know, creating positivity for the tourism and outbound tourism market and thank you very much uh, informa and thank you mr murari i end my thank panel you, thank, uh, you. Session. thank you thank you thank you it was a thank you everyone time. yeah thank you let's all stay strong and positive and god bless all thank you thank you thank you sir Thank you Mandra. Thank you.